All right, so let's start things here. The national grid, of course, struggling to meet demand. Businesses are having to consider alternative sources of energy. If they don't do it, we've seen this far too often, they eventually end up having to cut back on jobs and even, in a worst case scenario, closing their doors completely. So where does business fit into all of this? So let's get the thoughts uh, of energy expert uh, Mohammed Mahdi making time uh, for me this morning. Hello to you, Mohammed. Good to have you back on ENCA. It's always good to talk to you. Where does business uh, fit into this electricity crisis? What can business really do to your, to your mind? Good morning. Good morning to all the viewers. Look, it's, it's quite a, co a complex question. Uh, there's a number of things that business can do to assist government in terms of getting the, the economy and the electricity grid to an acceptable level. But let's just step back for a moment very quickly and understand that first and foremost, ESCOM is a state-run entity and government insists on ESCOM being, continue to be a state-run entity and continue to have control over that. So government actually has no business asking business to help ESCOM. Um, if they insist on it being a state-run entity, then they need to sort it out. If in, instead, well, you know, we, we come to an agreement as a country and as business and government that the entire electricity supply industry, the electricity generation industry needs reform, and that business needs to play a role in this reform, then it's a completely different conversation. And that's the conversation that needs to be had. So if you want meaningful business participation, you need to have a meaningful dialogue, meaningful discussion with real uh, you know, transparency and also a greater degree of involvement from the private sector. Not just the case where government comes with the begging bowl coming to business and asking for assistance, but without giving any, anything up in return, without allowing business to apply its skills and its competence and its capability to the solution of the problem in a meaningful way. So that's very important to just set this in, in terms of that. What business can, can actually do, I think first and foremost, businesses need to look at solutions that are the most viable for them. And right now, fortunately, renewable energy is a more viable option than your grid connected power, whether it's from the municipality or whether it's from ESCO. So businesses need to embrace renewable energy in a, in a very, very comprehensive way. This is the first thing that businesses can do to be more viable. This also means that they will reduce their dependence. Unfortunately, not completely become independent of the grid at this point, but they will reduce their dependence depending on the specific kinds of solutions that they put in place. So the onus is on business to look at those solutions that are the most viable and to implement those solutions. And that's really where we have seen uh, businesses coming to the party over the last year. I'm trying to understand, I think you're making some very good points, and I'm, I'm trying to understand uh, where government actually fits in here, between this role of ESCOM, as you say, uh, state-owned entity and private business. I like the way you said this, th that government has no business in asking business to get involved. Do you envision, Mohammed, where there is a compatibility between the two? There is a working relationship. Because I've heard this argument before where it's a case of, well, government and ESCOM was worried about getting ESCOM up and running and let business take care of business without getting tied up in all the bureaucracy and the red tape. Which way would you like to see it go? Let ESCOM and government handle ESCOM, let private business handle private business, or do you think they should actually work together? Look, looking at it systemically, there's undoubtedly a number of relationships, and we cannot divorce the two completely. So, you know, business is dependent on a viable, robust, strong electricity grid, electricity supply, and government is, is very much dependent on a strong, vibrant economy. So we have to work together. There's no question about that. How do we do this? So if we look at ESCOM, ESCOM clearly has a role to play as a network operator. That is fundamentally what ESCOM should be doing. Generation and the generation business should over time, of course not overnight, but over time be, become privatized. And similarly, the distribution side of the business should over time become privatized. 
Some of that is already underway with the legislation that has been put in place. Now, keep in mind that this has been spoken about for the last 20 years. I remember when I was a power station engineer, and even when I was heading up, uh, you know, ESCOM's capital program, there was a lot of talk back in the late 90s about uh, unbundling ESCOM. Nothing actually concrete has happened in this yeah. regard. Yeah. So we need to move those steps forward. And so when you now look at how ESCOM is trying to offer incentives, when I say ESCOM, I mean government and ESCOM, I mean them as, as one package, of course, uh, incentivizing uh, businesses to perhaps put power back on the grid if you have surplus energy as well. Do you feel that's being done in a way that's making it attractive for businesses to want to do that? Because that's one of the big questions we're asking this morning. If someone does have extra solar, whether it's a massive mining company like Goldfields, where we are this morning, Mohammed, uh, with our reporter, small to medium size or even private owners, do you get a sense that it's being uh, made attractive enough by government for users to put power back uh, on the grid? So you see, I think just the same way that we don't want uh, government coming to business with a banging ball, business should not be going to government with a banging ball either. So it's not really ESCOM's business or government's business to make this overly attractive. Businesses need to put in place solutions that are viable for themselves mm -hmm. and by themselves. The fact that there is some grid incentive, some feed-in tariff, like it's called in other countries, incentive is good. But that should not be the overriding factor that makes the solution viable or not viable. It should be viable from the point of view of the user and the user being able to pay for the service at a rate that is profitable by itself. The fact that you have this additional incentive is great. That, that's fine. So I think it's definitely a step in the right direction in terms of what ESCOM and business are doing. Um, but businesses, just to reiterate, need to set up solutions Things, need to implement solutions that are viable in their own right. And going forward, this is the only way that it's sustainable. If you implement a solution that is feasible and viable in its own right. Yeah, it's actually a, a great way of explaining it and looking at it uh, as well. Look after your own business and the rest uh, will look after itself. Mohamed Mahdi, I appreciate your time. Energy expert joining us. Yes, it can't be an isolation of ESCOM, of course, but I like the way you said that uh, feed in services. It's only if it's viable for you as a business. In the end, as a business, if you're spending the money to keep your own power on, that's got to be the first priority. Of course, that's